So welcome to online training session day 4, 3D meshing. Uh, as we have completed uh, day 1 that is FEM theory, day 2 1D meshing. In day 3 we have completed uh, 2D meshing, then on day 4 that is today we are going to call, see how to do 3D meshing in hypermesh. Then so on accordingly we will proceed for the next training series. The topics which I am going to cover in this in today's training session is uh, creating and editing solid geometry that is most important to understand the behavior of solid geometry and edit them. Then uh, how to create tetra mesh that is there are two options available in hypermesh to create tetra mesh. One is uh, direct tetra mesh that is auto tetra mesh uh, creating us closed surface volume or a solid geometry and directly uh, converting it into tetra mesh or the second option is doing the 2D geometry and closing that and then performing the tetra mesh then converting it into tetra elements. Then also you will see in this uh, tetra mesh option is to how to perform the quality checks and how to improve the quality of the elements of the tetra elements. Then uh, we will see creating a hexa penta mesh using surfaces and creating a hexa hetero meshing using solid map function. So these are the two more in hexa hex meshing. Lastly we will see uh, how to use tetra mesh process manager for uh, tetra elements to create tetra elements. So we will start with this first tutorial as uh, creating and editing solid geometry. In this tutorial, uh, we will see how to, uh, what is solid geometry is, what is topology is and what is 3D topology look like. So these are the things which uh, we will cover in this. So I will open this. SolidGeometry.hm you can see it in the line mode. If you click on here, this is the shaded geometry. You can also change it to mixed so that you can see the surface color as well as the edge colors. In the earlier tutorial, I have already discussed about the edge colors like what does green means, what does yellow means, what does red means. So if you make it in a line mode, you can see there are no red edges. So my geometry is a complete uh, enclosed volume. You can see all the surfaces are uh, having the green edges. So it's completely enclosed volume. So now we will uh, start with creating surfaces or we can start with converting the surfaces into uh, solids. So if we have only surfaces then how to convert them into solids that we will see first. For that uh, we will go to geometry page solids. In solids we will click on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 option that is bounding surfaces. Here it uh, provides the option as surface. So I'll if you click on a surface and if it's an enclosed surface geometry then it will automatically pick all the surface. If not, I will show you. I will just toggle one of these. So it is not now, it's not an enclosed. So again you can see, if I click on the surface it's not picking. So it has to be an enclosed surface geometry. All the edges have to be green or blue. There has, there should not be any red edges. So I will again toggle it down. So now you can see it picks all. Then uh, check the auto select solid surfaces. So it will automatically uh, select the enclosed volume and create the solid. And uh, you can shuffle it here from surface component to current component. So make it as the surface component. So it will directly go to the component in which the surface are. Or you can create a new component like solids give him a different color, create and toggle it down to current component and say create. So now if I off this, my geometry will be in this component. So you can see. 
my geometry is in a different component like solids. So these are the solids. If the line, uh, the red color, uh, sorry, the green color edge, if you see it's bold, so that means they are solid. In surfaces, they are very thin. If they are, uh, the, these green color edges are thicker, so that means they are solid. As you can see, my solid has been generated. Now, uh, we will see how to create geometry cylinder using uh, different options. So again for this we will go to geometry solids and in this we will select cylinder full that is the second option. We will select uh, this I will make it in a line mode and select the first and second node. Enter the base radius as 1.5. Uh, I want to create a cylindrical portion of uh, 3 mm dia and the height will be 25 that is the distance between these two nodes I have calculated it I will again show you uh, that from this to this it's the distance and say create so once you click on create you can see a uh, circular cylindrical portion has got created in hypermesh itself. Then uh, we will see how to subtract the cylindrical volume from rest of the part. That how to delete that. So for that we will go to geometry page solid edits and select the radio button as boolean here we verify that operation type should be simple in bracket combine all then we will select the operation to A minus B remove B from A this operation we will select as A we will select the complete one and the B one we will and select B as the cylindrical solid and click on calculate so you can see it will get deleted so we have created a cylindrical hole in this geometry so in this way you can create uh, different types of uh, sections in the existing geometry in hypermesh itself then we will see how to split the solid geometry using bounding lines. So we will go to trim with lines panel in the same that is geometry solid edit trim with lines. So in the, for this we will go to trim with lines panel. Then uh, under the bounding lines this under this uh, active bonding lines you will select the solid then for the further process we will select the line and we will select these lines and say trim. So once you click on trim 
you can see that there are two different solids one as this one if we select this so in this way we have trimmed these two different solids so if I make it in a mappable that I will explain you later what is mappable is then we will see a different option like with cut lines again we will select the uh, smaller solid and on this so now you can again go to geometry solid edits pick this one from this end to this end we will create a cut line so you can see it has created a cut line or you can select the solid and put the nodes from this to this and say trim so in this way there are different options available to create the cut sections in solid geometry like we see in the surfaces Now later on we will see how to merge two solids that if we want to merge two solids how to do that for that uh, we will again go to geometry solid edit and click on merge we will select to be merged this solid and this solid and click on merge so once you click on merge you can see it will merge these two solids which we have split it then So these are the some options uh, in Hypermesh through which you can uh, edit the solid geometries with a different cross uh, with different options so like creating the geometry and uh, editing it by creating the cylindrical holes and splitting them into different uh, solids and if uh, there are already many many different solids so how to merge them also that also you can go with the same panel so merge boolean trim with lines so these are the options with the solid you can convert it into surfaces into solids so in this way uh, we have ended with the first tutorial that is uh, what are the different options then we will move to the next one that is tetra meshing in this tutorial uh, we will see how 
to perform volume tetra mesh what is uh, standard tetra mesh checking tetra elements quality and pre-meshing tetra elements as per the quality so hypermesh provides two methods of generating a tetrahedral element the volume tetra mesher works directly with surfaces of solid geometries to automatically generate a tetrahedral mesh without further interaction from the user. Even with complex geometry, this method can often generate a high quality tetra mesh quickly and easily. The standard tetra mesh requires a surface mesh of tria or quad elements as input, then provides you with a number of options to control the resulting tetrahedral mesh. This offers a great deal of control over the tetrahedral mesh and provides the means to generate a tetrahedral mesh for even the most complex models. The tetra mesh panel allows you to fill an enclosed volume with first or second order tetrahedral elements. A region is considered enclosed if it is entirely bounded by shell elements where each element has material on one side and open space on the other. So we will look into this, I will click on new. Open the file of housing.hm, again we will click on this surface icon to view the surfaces. So this is my geometry on which I am going to perform the tetra mesh. So again we will see whether it is enclosed volume or not. So I will opt this and check there are no free edges and suppressed edges on this. So it's a perfectly enclosed volume. So now you can see here. Also I will mask any one surface to see uh, the inside area. So I will mask, go to mask panel and uh, mask this surface. So here you can see this is hollow inside. So these are the surfaces. So you can perform the tetra mesh on surfaces and solids. Again I will click unmask all. So now we will start with uh, <coughs> volume tetra mesh uh, to create tetra mesh for the cover this portion. So to do that we will go to 3D page. On 3D page we will select tetra mesh panel to create tetra elements. In this panel we will select volume tetra mesh. Select the entity as enclosed volume surfaces because we have surfaces. If we have solid we can select solids too. So as per my geometry I will select it. So I will select surfaces. Click on the surface and if it's an enclosed volume it will automatically pick all the surfaces as you have as you can see here it automatically picks all the surfaces. So same as the solid if it's an uh, completely enclosed volume it automatically picks the surfaces. Then uh, we'll verify that the 2D type is set to trias and 3D type is set to tetras from this drop box. We will select uh, the elements to current component. So it will uh, move to directly to the current component that is cover. Then we specify the element size as 10. I will uh, later on explain what is use curvature and use proximity. And click on mesh. So once you click on mesh, it will create a tetra element. So if I off this geometry from here, you can see it has created the tetra elements. I will mask one of the element. Mask and say reverse. So you can see this is the tetra element. If I make it in the line mode, changing the color to view it better, you can see this is the tetra element. So the software automatically creates the tetra element 
using the surfaces or if I mask a portion of it so you can see here it has created the tetra element it has filled the surfaces completely now uh, we will see some other options in the tet volume tetra mesh panel so here you can see it, it doesn't capture the curvatures perfectly you can see here also uh, the smaller region it doesn't capture perfectly so here also the fillet region is not captured you can see this is the mesh line and this is the surface if I make it in a line mode you can see it more clearly so this uh, we have some more options through which it can capture the surfaces more accurately you can see here also so the cur curved regions it, it, uh, it doesn't capture perfectly you can see for this one also so what I'll do now I'll delete these elements which I created and we'll see some other options like 2D as R trials pick the surface keeping all the other parameters as it is we will click on mesh and see the difference so you can see if you create an artria mesh the fillet region the curved region it captures more accurately as compared to the tria because artrias capture the curved zones more accurately so that's why it's always preferable to go for the uh, r tri elements. I'll click on reject. Again, 3D Tetra Mesh. And uh, we'll move to the next. So now we will see the some more options in Tetra Mesh, Volume Tetra Mesh panel. That is use curvature and use proximity. So what all these two? So if you check the box of use curvature, it will come up with the feature angle. That means it will help us to capture the curve features. Use proximity will help us to provide the range from minimum element size to maximum element or the average element size. So with these two options, if they are ticked and uh, if you put a proper input here, so a better tetra mesh can be uh, taken even with the auto mesh panel. So I will show you. I will use the minimum element size as 1. Feature angle I will keep at uh, 30 degree. That is uh, after every 30 degree normal to the element it creates one more element. And we will click on mesh. So it is creating the elements, as you can see it is processing. Now you can see, if I make it in a line mode, so now you can see it has created a dense mesh around the fillets to capture them perfectly and a coarse mesh around the planar surface. because they don't require that much amount of elements so it creates that in that manner also if I change the average element size from 1 to 5 or oh sorry 10 to 5 we will reduce it now you can see it also capture the fillets as well as it creates a good meshing around the planar surface also. So you can see the error margin on around the fillets are very very less here. So with these two options if you check box these two options and put the inputs here minimum angle and feature angle sorry minimum element size and feature angle. So you by the auto mesh volume tetra panel you can get a good tetra mesh elements.
also you can see here there is a surface deviation so it captures the surface deviation too so if i have this geometry you can see uh, quite a good mesh we have achieved so now i'll click uh, return and go to the hub panel where i already have the i'll change the color i already have the 2d mesh if i what i'll do i will uh, just mask these elements also i will mask this face so you you can see that so this is hollow and i have a 2d surface mesh here you can see that so on the enclosed volume i already have the 2d surface mesh elements by face so now we will see how to uh, convert this 2d mesh into a tetra element so this is uh, hollow if i off this geometry mask a portion of it so it's completely hollow inside you can see this now we will see how to convert this into uh, tetra elements so before converting it into tetra elements it is always good Uh, or it's always suggested to check 2D elements quality first, and then go further to convert that into 3D elements, so that automatically the quality of 3D element will improve. So we will first go to Tools, Edges, and check whether it is an enclosed volume or not. That the elements are enclosed volume or not. So I will drop down it to elements. select all the elements say preview equivalence equivalence and say find edges so at the bottom you can see no edges were found selected and elements may enclose a volume if this message appears that means your meshing is perfectly have an enclosed volume so now you are ready to go to the next level that is quality checks so element quality checks we will check for warpage aspect ratio it's perfect jacobian is perfect minimum angle try is also perfect maximum angle try it's also perfect so everything is perfect here so that we can proceed to a uh, tetra mesh so we will select 3d tetra mesh but in this we will select tetra mesh the first radio button that is tetra mesh there are two options to convert a 2d elements into 3d tetra elements first is fixed tria pods to tetra elements that is uh, the splitting of these tria elements uh, will get converted as same into 3d element or if you select float tria or pod so this splitting may be changed means if in this scenario if the splitting is like this and during the tetra element uh, quality check if the splitting is something like this uh, it can convert it so always it is suggested that if you are enough confident on your 2d elements that it is perfect then only select the fixed tria and pod to tetra mesh otherwise you can select float trias pod to tetra mesh so i will select this and click on mesh i will uh, also make it this as the current one so the my meshing will go to this one i will on this and you can see here it has created a tetra elements if i mask a portion of it so you can see it has completely filled in so in this way you can see by uh, on this one and mask a portion of this to a little more extent 
So this is 2D outer surface and inside you can see the 3D tetra elements. Now we will check the qualities of tetra element and if required how to improve that we will also see that so I will off this and check the quality of this so again I will go to to check the quality of the tetra elements go to tools check elements or press F10 from your keyboard that is the short key of check element panel select the radio button as 3D because we are going to check the quality of 3D elements so first I have this 3D element also so what I will do now I will off this and uh, delete this one because it may show the quality of that too so I just want to see the quality of only uh, hub el elements on the hub so in tetra elements we will first check the tet collapse so generally the tet collapse value should be more than 3.3 tet collapse is the just as I have discussed in the day one theory of FEM it's the height of the element it's the height of the tetra element so it has to be more than 0.3 that is 30 percent of the actual one so you can see around five elements are failing which is having the uh, tetra element uh, oh sorry tet collapse as less than 0.3 so we will find them and solve them so I will click on tet collapse to find all these five elements click on save field then click on mask from the drop box select elements click on the elements and select retrieve so all those five elements which are failing which I have selected in the quality check panel will get highlighted here we'll select reverse to reverse those uh, uh, we'll select all the elements other than those five and click on mask so that on my GUI only those five elements are highlighted which are getting failed so I will create the nodes from shift F2 I can create the nodes here and with this you can see these are the elements which are failing so there are different different options available in hypermesh to improve the quality of the elements so we will discuss one by one all so I will press shift F5 first go to find attach radio button select the elements and say find I will off this so it will select all the elements attached to the element which is getting failed so you can see here then again I will go to 3D tetra mesh and now we will see the tetra mesh re, tetra remesh panel so I will select 3D elements and click on remesh so there are five elements which are getting failed so again I will press F10 from my keyboard and click on tet collapse so now you can see earlier the minimum tet collapse value is coming as 0.19 so now it has improved to 0.26 so it has improved a lot uh, or I will on all these and say tet collapse so you can see the without doing anything my tet collapse value has improved a lot from 0.19 to 0.26 so I will save this I will also I will show you some other options to improve the quality of tetra elements further so again I will click on save field mask elements retrieve elements reverse and click on mask shift F2 to add the nodes and one by one we will see uh, 
what are the options through which we can improve the quality of these elements. So it is having the TET collapse as 0.277 as you can see this particular element. So I will show you what are the options available in HyperMesh to improve the quality of this particular element. So the one way is we can use a translate command. So shift F4 is the short key of translate command. We will select this node, define a plane enter the magnitude as 0.1 and click on translate so it will move a little bit then again press F10 from the keyboard and check so you can see it has improved to 0.3 that is my aim to improve it to 0.3 again for this one too as this is more flatter so the one way is we can change the distance of it from 7 to 6 and then check the TED collapse value. It's 0.274. So again, I will press Shift F4, pick this node, select this, and change it. So it has improved to 0.33. So once I uh, done with this, so I will mask it and press Shift F2 and click on Clear All. So I have solved one, then the next. So first of all I will see what is the value of tech collapse. It's 0.26, so I will improve it. Shift F4, this node, through these three sides, F10, it's 0.28, or we can do one more thing, F4 and change this distance, say 4.3, again press F10, it's 3.14, you can see here. So I will again click on mask, mask this element, shift F2 and clear these nodes. So we are left with these two elements. So this is also the same thing, shift plus F4 to trans enter to translate command, F10, 0.338, again F5 mask, shift F2 and clear this. Then the last element, first we will check its point. 29 so it's very very less again we will select this so we have to just increase the height of the element to improve tet collapse so now you can see that its tet collapse value is 0.35 so now for all the elements what is the tet collapse value we will see so i will press shift f2 and say clear all again go to tools check element TET collapse. So now all the elements are having the TET collapse value more than 0.3. So as per your convenience or as per your requirement of the model or the geometry, you can improve the value of TET collapse. In 3D tetra elements, the most important check is the TET collapse. In the same way, minimum angle should be, should can go to up till 15 degree, it's okay. Maximum angle can be taken as 130 degree so it's uh, within very quiet range so that's not an issue so these are the tech collapse is the most important check for uh, tetra element because if the height is very very less so it's almost like 2d element so it will not uh, behave like a proper 3d element so to make it behave like proper 3d element it should have a proper height that's why uh, tetra tech collapse is the most important check so in this way uh, we have ended with this tutorial uh, so we will proceed to the next one so uh, we will move to the next tutorial that is creating a hexapenta mesh using surfaces 
in this tutorial uh, we will see how to create solid using different functions and uh, we will see how to check and fix improper model connectivity so I will click on new to discard this and open a new file that is armbracket.hm so these are the surfaces they, they are not solid so even with these surfaces too we can create a solid hexa mesh so what are the different options available in hypermesh to create it we will see here so I will make to the model browser and make this as the current the base one so I will hide all these apart from the base one so I will make it uh, only visible I will start with the base one meshing for the hex mesh this time I am going to perform hexa meshing that is brick meshing it is also called as brick meshing so with the surfaces to create a hexa mesh a manual hexa meshing we will use 2D and uh, different options so that we can drag it the 2D to create the hex element so I will go to 2D auto mesh panel and we will select the top face uh, two surfaces that is one is L and the base surface and click on mesh I will say reject uh, and abort I will make this as quads again select say mesh so in this way you can see it has created the chords but I only want the chords so chords only set to all and say mesh so you can see it creates only the chord the try elements has been removed so I click return so this is the 2D element if I uh, make it in a line geometry you can see this is a 2D shell element now we will convert it into 3D element so we will see how to convert that into 3D element I will click return to exit the 2D auto mesh panel now to create layer of hex element for the base we will go to 3D element offset on 3D page we will select element offset in this we will select solid layers radio button we will select the elements to offset these are the elements I want to offset specify the number of layers to be 5 so along this thickness I want 5 layers of hex element along this region so I have selected the number of layers to be 5 the total thickness we will specify as 25 that is the distance between this point to this point is 25 so we will select the total thickness as 25 then click on offset positive so once you click on offset positive you can see it has created a hex meshing if I mask a portion of it you can see this this is the hexa element it created okay or if I mask one any one element uh, and mask all or I will select mask and reverse so you can see this is my hex element if I make it in a line mode elements and uh, changing the color to view it more so this is the hex element I can also create the nodes you can see here so this is 8 noded hex element if I change the order 3D order change change to second select the elements and say change order again if I enter the nodes so this is the second order hex element Okay, so 
clear all. Again, I will change the order. Change to first element, display it, and change order. So I will make it again in a blue color. So now we will move to arm curve zone, the next portion. We will see how to mesh the, that particular portion. So how to mesh a curved portion using hex element. So first of all I will press F5 from my keyboard. Select elements I will first mask the bottom surfaces. Elements by config. Config type by hex 8 because I want to mask only the hex head elements, not the 2D elements. Click on the select entity and say mask. Then I will click on return. Again I will show you elements by config. Select hex 8. Click on all, select entity and say mask. So now you can see the 2D elements are only highlighted. I have masked the 3D elements. Then uh, first to do the meshing of this particular component, we have to create a center node for this. To provide the angle or the radius, we need to create a center node of this curve portion. So to create the center node I will go to uh, F4 the distance panel. Select three nodes. Select any one curved edge and uh, create circle center. So in this way I have created a circle center. Again I will show you. I will repeat the same thing. To create a center, the first segment of the arm can be meshed using spin panel. We will use the spin panel to do the mesh. This requires a node to be selected as the center point of rotation. The node you create in this step will be used at the center point. To create the center node, you will use distance 3 node panel. So we will go to F4. Select any one curved line left click on it until it becomes a box and on the edge select arbitrary select three nodes and then click on circle center so it will create the circle center to check we will create one more as circle center So you can see it has created the circle center. Now uh, we will use 3D spin panel to create a hex elements along this curved portion that is arm curved. So I will make it in a line mode. We will select spin element because we have elements. So I will select only these elements which I want to spin. Otherwise it will spin all the elements. We will specify the angle as 90 degree from this end to this end because this is the 90 degree angle. From the direction we will select x axis if I put it in x y so you can see we want to spin it with the x axis so it will get a uh, spin in y z plane that's what we want.
then uh, at the base point we will select this as the base point that is the center of this curved portion and on spin we will specify 24 as we want to create 24 elements along this region the 24 layer of elements along this curved path so on spin we will create 24 layers along this curved path and click on spin negative but these elements move to this same component so I will click on reject and make this as the current and again click on spin negative so you can see it has created a hex mesh if I go to mask and mask this so you can see with this option too you can create a hex element so there are different options available in hyper mesh to create the hex element so it's an individual choice which option he wants to use where so these tutorials will help you to understand the different option behavior then uh, again we will move to the next component the next uh, arm straight to create the mesh meshing for this so up till this point we have done the meshing so we will move to the next component that is arm straight in uh, we will see one more panel see you can use single panel to create the complete tetra hexa meshing on this but we are in this tutorial I am using different different panels to show you that what are the different options available in hypermesh so that uh, you have a variety of options uh, for a different types of geometry so to create uh, the again to create the hex mesh we have one more option as uh, line drag or something like that so linear solid we have one more option as linear solid which where we provide from which elements to which element we want to create the hex elements so what we do now we have to create a 2d faces here these are the 3d elements you can see if I mask this you can see these are the 3d elements so for the solid layers option linear solid option you have to provide 2D elements you can't provide the 3D elements so we need to create a face or a 2D structure or a 2D element here on this particular face so I will go to tools faces select this component and click on find face so this will help me to create the face then I will make this only this current one so I will click on the elements by face say reverse and click on delete so I'll all this I will on this go to delete select elements or go to mask pick this element elements by face mask and delete the rest of the elements so now I have the 2D shell elements over the hex element so that I can use linear solid to drag but to use linear solid we require the elements on both the side so we require the elements here also so we create a 2d element here from 2d auto mesh panel pick this make it in a line mode and say mesh but to use linear solid the number of elements on the both side has to be same so I will select this 444 and 333 So now you can see the number of layers 
or the number of elements on all the edges are exactly same. Okay, so then I will click on return. I will off this. Go to 3D linear solid. Then from we will select this to we will select this. And in N1, N2, N3 we will select these three. With the same one, I will select the aligned one to this. It has to be exactly the same. For density, I will select 12. So 12 number of uh, layer, 12 layers it will create. And click on solids. I will say reject and make it in a make this as the current and click on solids. So now you can see if I off this, it has created a solid element for this too. I will press return. So if I mask a portion of it and say reverse, so you can see it has created a hex mesh. So this is one more option through which you can create the hex mesh when you have two similar 2D mesh meshing on opposite faces. So you can directly convert that into hex meshing. So now uh, my face option is done. So I will off this. Then I will uh, move to the next option. With the same, I will press shift, uh, I will go to 2D, auto mesh, pick this surfaces, and say mesh. I will make sure that the number of elements here has to be same, so it has 1, 2, 3, 4 elements, it has 1, 2, 3, 4 elements, I will make it here 4. Also, here also we will make it same. So the meshing will look quite smooth. Also, we can increase the number of layers here. Four is good. I'll make it as the make current. So with this we will go to line track or I will make it in a line mode. First I will project one node at the top so that uh, it will be easy for me to pick the nodes along the edge. So we have one node here to pick. Similarly I will project a node here. So shift F7 is used to project. This node I will say duplicate. Two line normal say project. So I will project this here. Then I uh, will go to 3D solid map function. I will show you one more option. Here I will select general option as this. Source geometry as none. I don't want to provide the geometry. Destination geometry surface and select the 
top surface then along geometry i will select mixed then i will select the line and select this line then we will select node by path and select the node path from here so we will select this as the node path then in the elements to drag i will select these elements i want to drag these and click on mesh so once you click on mesh you can see it has created a perfect meshing so if i off this geometry and on the meshing so this is the hex mesh which it has created again i will click on mask all so uh, this is one more option shift f2 and clear all the nodes so these are the some options available in hypermesh through which you can create a different or uh, these are the different option through which you can create hex mesh in uh, hypermesh so if you do manually so there are less chances of getting uh, elements failure but uh, there is a connectivity issue about the elements so we will see and correct them so if i go to tools faces i will select all the components and say find faces if i off this keeping only the face so it has to be hollow from inside throughout so i will go to mask pick all the elements on the one side and say by face and say mask so now you can see it is not hollow from here it is giving two faces you can see here so it should not show like this so it should not create some faces like this it should be through hollow you can see in this portion it is providing the two faces here you can see so how to solve them so i will again go to delete uh, right click on delete this and uh, again go to faces say point 1 preview equivalence equivalence or i will deselect it and select only the this region of element and increase the tolerance value say preview equivalence equivalence say return again i will go to tools faces click on find faces of these again we will check it has to be all over its side so mask elements by face mask so you can see 
some portion is now hollow but some is still missing so they, we have to equivalence all these so we will again delete it So to enter the equivalence value we can select uh, the length or uh, first we will mask them. This complete this particular section we will mask it. Mask and say reverse. And then check the length. It's 3.4. So again tools Faces. I will this time enter the value as 1, preview equivalence, equivalence, find faces. Or I will delete it uh, and create the face for all. Find faces. If I opt this, Go to mask, elements by face mask. So now you can see here this is now completely hollow and it is perfect. So it this portion has to be hollow or it's through. So it is now corrected. This is showing the edges because it has no elements here. So now this one is perfectly connect now my elements are perfectly connected throughout so in this way you can check the element connectivity and improve that element connectivity also also there is one more option uh, through which you can check whether your hexa mesh which you, you have created contains the uh, has the perfect connectivity or not you can check that also you can directly convert it into hexa so I will create one more component here uh, and go to 3D Tetra Mesh and I will convert this to Tetra Elements. If it get converted into Tetra Elements that is that means my faces are completely connected and everything is perfect. So in this way you can check these options or these parameters to create a hex mesh for any structure you want. So these are the different options available in HyperMesh to create hexa -peta mesh for the model. So in this way we have ended with this tutorial so we will move to the next one that is creating hexagonal mesh using solid map function. So now uh, we will see how to create a hexahedral mesh using solid map function. In this tutorial you will learn how, what is solid geometry is, what is topology is and what is 3D topology look like. Solids are geometric entities that define three dimensional volume. The use of solid geometry is helpful when dividing a part into multiple volumes for example dividing a part into simple mappable region to hex mesh the part so we will see how to perform the hexa mesh on this using mappable function so i will open the next one next geometry and checking it uh, how to make it mappable So by geometry editing you can make this, that part as mappable if I make it as mappable region so you can see. So there are different colors of mappable uh, if I go to visualization you can see the colors. Yellow color means one directional, green color means three directional mappable from where you can mesh it. 
blue color means it's ignored it is not mappable and red color also it's not mappable so it has to be two colors only that is yellow color and green so by solid editing the first tutorial which i have shown through that you can create a geometry into mappable so we will start the meshing if we have a complete mappable geometry that uh, without creating a 2D element directly we can create the hex elements that I will show you how to create that direct hex element so uh, for that I will go to 3D page on 3D page I will select solid mesh sorry uh, on 3d page I will go to solid map select uh, one volume radio button that is the fourth fifth option uh, on the along parameter I will enter the size as one then I will select this solid I will start with this solid and click on mesh if you are seeing like this if the elements come like this so click on the shaded geometry so you can see the elements in the shaded geometry region so click on this icon to view these elements in the shaded geometry region sometimes it come like this so just click on it similarly select this and click on mesh So automatically it finds the connectivity and proceed to the mesh. Then all, there are some other options also through which you can create a 2D meshing and then with that reference of 2D meshing you can use uh, solid map function to create direct 3D meshing. So we will go to 2D auto mesh. Pick this, enter the element size to 1, mesh type as mixed, we will click on mesh. and in the element density or element size uh, we will element density will enter 4 and say set to all and say mesh so you can see a smooth mesh pattern has been achieved here uh, then I will click on return again we will click on return then again we will go to 3D solid map now we will see some other options that is in one volume and we will select the volume this one and toggle this to element size to element density and enter 10 that is the number of elements and click on mesh so you can see it follows the 2D mesh to mesh the region so you can see here it has followed this for the top region and rest it will follow the same so in this way it has created, a, if I make it in the line mode you can see, okay.
then uh, we'll see how to match the rest of the volume that is rest of the solid elements so I will select as this other solid element size I will toggle it down to element size and enter the value uh, value as 1.5 and click on mesh also you can select multiple solids like this and mesh them all at once so these are the options through which you can perform a hex meshing directly if your geometry is mappable this option is only uh, can be taken into account only if the geometry is mappable. If the geometry is not mappable then you have to follow the step which I have shown you in the earlier tutorial. That creating 2D meshing and then dragging those 2D elements with the different options available. Also, I will delete it and say delete on. I will on this geometry and uh, we will pick all these and mesh at once. So, if entire geometry is mappable, you can mesh the surfaces all at once too. So if I off this you can see. So if I click return. So this is the options, different options available in HyperMesh to perform or to create hex meshing. Now lastly we will see, so in this way we have ended with this tutorial, I will click yes, new and lastly we will see using Tetra Mesh Process Manager. So in this tutorial uh, we will learn about using the Tetra Mesh Process Manager to import the geometry or hyper mesh file, clean up the geometry organize the model holes and features, establish a mesh size and pattern uh, for the organized geometry, create a 2D mesh, clean up the 2D mesh, create 3D tetra mesh. So we will see this. So let's start this session. Uh, so the tetra mesh process manager uh, uh, to activate or to initiate the process manager click on mesh create tetra mesh process create new enter the my section name select the working folder on which you want to save the file or the tetra mesh file and then I will click on create. So it will create the process
the Tetramesh process manager is a step by step process predefined to start with importing the geometry or HM file till editing, till meshing, till quality check. Everything is described step by step. You can see the hierarchy tree. That first it is asking for geometry import. So we will select the file type as HM because I have the HM file. Select the location uh, where you have the file. So I have the file here. And click on import. So this will import the geometry. Then after importing the geometry, the next step is to clean up the geometry. As you can see, it has already directed us to geometry cleanup. So in this, first we will select the edge tools. We will uh, enter to free edge, enter the equivalence with 0.25 as a tolerance value. So it will remove all the free edges. Now equivalence, all the free edges. Then I will enter to edge tool. And we'll click on isolate. So it should show you the message that no edges found for selected type unable to isolate. That means my complete geometry is perfectly fine to proceed further. Then click on accept. So we'll accept this. Then you can see it automatically uh, moves to a next panel that is organize and clean up holes. In this click on plus tab. On the first line, enter 3.3 in less than D, that is dia, is less than 3. Enter 5, we will enter 5 in the second and 10 in the third row. Keeping all the parameters as it is, we will click on auto organize. So now you can see it has organized all the holes into different components with diameter ranging from 0 to 3.3. The holes having the dia range from 3.3 to 5. Holes having the dia ranging from 5 to 10 so that we can mesh it separately as per our requirement. So if I go to select this component, make it a little transparent so that it will be easily visible. You can see this. So it's divide all the holes into different components automatically. Okay. Then uh, number of circumference elements enter, I will enter 12 on each and along uh, longitudinal element size I will enter 1 for all. So along the circumference it will create 12 elements and for this portion it will create the element size of 1 for the 2D machine. Then click on accept. It will redirect us to a next option that is mesh holes. So we will mesh the holes. Then 
then click on keeping all the parameters as it is click on mesh all so it will mesh all the elements so now you can see this it has meshed all the elements perfectly so automatically it has meshed all the elements you can also delete the mesh from the dropbox you can change it to this and say mesh all to get a another type of mesh with this which is not perfect so always make sure i'll go to delete elements all and say delete i'll select accept and select this regular mesh and say mesh all so it meshed all the surfaces you can see like this then click on accept to accept this meshing it will move us to a next panel that user defined features organize and clean up the feature this this panel it will automatically move to the next one will click on plus enter the feature name as faces we'll select all these five flat faces here and click on proceed it will ask for the destination component as group faces so i'll click on move and then click on return again i will click on plus and enter the name as top holes click okay and then i will select the surfaces of the top hole so we can differentiate the meshing with this say proceed and move so we have created two more components a different components to do the meshing so i'll click return and we'll accept it then we will move uh it directed us to organize and clean up fillets so we'll click on components and select this component say proceed enter the minimum radius as 0 and maximum as 5 and then clean up click on clean up so it will clean up all the unnecessary edges to remove the fillets so that the mesh quality will improve and click on accept to move to the next then it will redirect us to mesh the features so in faces you will select the mesh type as trias element size you will enter as 0.5 
and for top hole we will select R trier regular or R trier union jack enter the element size as 0.5 and click on mesh all so it will automatically mesh all the surfaces as you can see here then click on accept so then it will redirect us to organize and clean up we don't want to organize and clean up anymore everything is done so I'll just click on accept mesh the remaining size uh, remaining portion with the element size 1 mesh type as trials click on mesh so it will mesh all the components uh, all the remaining surfaces then I will click on accept then it will redirect us to element cleanup so we will directly move to the element cleanup portion so with this we will click on component and select all the components say proceed enter the appropriate features like minimum size to be less than point, approximately uh, minimum size to be 0.25 maximum feature angle to be 60 degree and normal angles to be 150 degree and then we will click, clean up, click on auto clean up so it will automatically clean all the elements so it will show you the message like cleanup process performed on 36 failed elements no failed elements remain so all the failed elements it automatically it uh, rectifies them and it make it perfect so now we will click on accept and move to the next and select this and say all and click on mesh so it will start the meshing process as you can see at the bottom it is showing that it is doing the meshing process So now you can see it has done it so I will close it or move to the model browser make this as isolate only and you can see it has created tetra elements or tetra meshing for the complete geometry with geometry editing and everything so you don't have to move to a different panels to perform different operations with the process tetra mesh process manager everything is synchronized uh, everything is in synchronized way to help you better and perform the tetra meshing in the fast way so in this way uh, we have ended with the online trading session day 4 in which I have covered 3D meshing techniques and geometry editing. Thank you very much for attending this session. To improve our online trading session please help us by sharing your valuable comments or if you have any doubts related to this 
you can also ask us those doubts on edu-support at india.rtr.com. So if you have any queries, any suggestion, uh, anything related to uh, this training series, feel free to contact us through edu-support at india.rtr.com. Also if you uh, find anything interesting on this, let us also know that. Thank you very much.